Welcome to Second Listen Saturday on the Parenting Roundabout Podcast, where we share some fun moments from a past episode for your weekend listening pleasure. Look for new episodes every Monday through Friday. Since when is having a best friend a bad thing? (laughs) Oh, you bully. (laughs) Allowing kids to prioritize one child over another. Yeah, recently in in kind of trying to dig up some topics for us to talk about on this podcast, I saw a post on Pop Sugar titled, This Preschool Banned the Term Best Friend. Would you react like this mom did? And uh, it tells the story of a four-year-old who came home from school with a note saying that she had been uh, uh, reprimanded by a teacher for using the phrase, for calling somebody her best friend. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, the mom reacted by saying, what? Basically. So, yes, I would react like that. And, <laughs> and yanking her kid, I think. <laughs> yes, I think school. she Well, she she inquired as to why this was a reprimanding offense since it was not in the rule book. Right. <laughs> and was told that the teacher with her years, many years of experience knew that this was the sort of thing that began with the forming of cliques and bullying and said they were not standing for it. And the mom then said, see ya, which I think I would probably do also. I mean, I have certainly, I have not had this particular experience, but I have certainly had the, and excuse me, Nicole, if I speak bad of your profession, I'm not talking about you personally. I've had the, I am an educator (laughs) with many years of experience and you are just what some parent do what I say. So, uh, you know, that alone, just that tone, just as soon as they said, well, in my decades of experience, I would say, bye, so long. <laughs> I don't in think my, I've ever said that to a parent, In my though. months of experience. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who says that? Yeah. Oh, plenty. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's not said out loud. Sometimes it's said in a facial expression or a sigh. But hmm. I know what they're thinking. Anyway, so <laughs> we thought we would talk today about this idea that... Um, you know, definitely clicks, not a good thing. We would like to find ways to keep kids from being clicky and excluding kids. And I understand that somebody being somebody else's best friend automatically excludes other people. And then it can sometimes be hurtful for a kid who felt that we were all friends. And now those two are best friends and they're leaving me out. But as adults is the best way to combat this really to say, all right, you can't say anybody's your best friend. Does that change the relationship? Does that make kids be less clicky? I have my doubts. Yeah. (laughs) I do too. I mean, and this is the kind of thing that I've told my kids before. Like, you don't have to be friends with someone you don't want to be friends with. Yes. You just have to be kind. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be mean. Um, So that's the kind of – that's more – what I think we need to be trying to yeah. teach. Like, and also, you know, people are allowed to have different relationships with different yes. people. And that doesn't mean that you're completely shutting out others. Right. You know? I mean, mm-hmm. it's hard for, you're talking about four year olds, you know? Yes. And it, that's challenging. Yeah. But they change their mind every That's time. true. It's probably <laughs> true that with four year olds, saying best friend is more of an exclusionary thing than a, this person and I just really hit it off often. We just really enjoy each other's company and we have a special bond. Right. It's like, right. she's my best friend. You're not, you know, and you're so not. that mm-hmm. may be what the teacher is thinking about, but still. But like you said, just banning that phrase does not change <laughs> yes. the situation it whatsoever. Is, as happens often. I think it's a a cosmetic fix to a deeper problem. Mm -hmm. So you can't just necessarily make that fix and then assume that the deeper problem goes away. Mm -hmm. They'll just call each other something else. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or they'll just learn, you know, to hide things from the teachers and their adults and their life. I guess so. And I mean... Friendship is a difficult thing. We've talked about friendship before and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, I think it's, it's nice to, it's certainly nice to have a best friend. And if you don't have a best friend, it's not so nice, but that doesn't mean that we should abolish best friends. I don't think. Uh, What do you, and Nicole, you've been on the educator end of this. How would you handle this sort of situation? Yeah, I think I'm going to speak more from a 
personal and parent point of view. Though, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Because like I've had two different, vastly, two vastly different experiences because growing up, I grew up in a very small community and you, there, you know, we only had so many kids in our age group. And so everybody paired off into best friends and it was, yeah. it was not fun. Like it was, because if you didn't have a best friend, you weren't included yeah. at all, right? Uh-huh, like uh-huh. you were, and of course, best friends changed by the week or the right. day. Or, <laughs> so it was yeah. this constant, you know, the the term best friend is so loaded for me. Yeah. And um, so then, it, so I really struggled with that because I, I grew up thinking I had to have a best friend. I had to have a best friend. And, and if I didn't, then that was just a terrible thing. Yeah. And then I, I got to university and of course my world just exploded because there were all these people, like so many people. And, um, and I wanted to, you know, get to know people. And, and I, so I kind of built a larger social circle and then realized, you know, you can have more than one best friend is what Catherine was saying. Like, yeah, people fill certain spots in your life, right? Like not, Mm -hmm. One person can't fulfill everything that you're that you're wanting, and, right. um, or it's a challenge too. <laughs> <laughs> and so I quickly developed, you, you know, a large social network, and that still exists in my life today. Like I hate just having that one person to rely on because yeah, I always feel leery. And and when somebody says to me, "Oh, you're my best friend," I'm like, you know, I feel very leery about that because I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so. When, you know, in raising Kristen, um, we often talked about, and that the funny thing too is, is that it doesn't matter the term you use, kids are still going to find a way to identify right who their person is, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, um, so I've heard Kristen use, you know, terms like bestie mm-hmm. and, you know, BFFL and BFF. And so they just, they have all their own ways of identifying. Yeah. Um, you know, regardless of what kind of rule an adult yeah. imposes on them. Um, mm-hmm. But so, yeah, so when I, so in raising Kristen, I always encourage her to keep her circles wide and broad. And yes, if you have something that's close, that's great. But just realize that everybody has a role in your life. And, yeah, um, you know, you can, yeah, you can do some things with one person, some things with, um, with another person. And, and then I, and so then translating that into the classroom as a teacher, um, that was kind of the message that I sent too, is that, you know, at recess time, you don't, you know, go and enjoy one another's company. Like I kind of, you know, I wasn't out there to really monitor it, but that was kind of the message that I tried to send. Like, you know, it's, let's be inclusive and there you go. Be inclusive. <laughs> be inclusive. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and welcome people. And, and, you know, and the, my daughter, I think is actually, I think she's pretty, you know, I think she's sort of taken that message or like, to, I feel like she has because she's got very wide circles and, um, you know, she's, she doesn't really, she's pretty welcoming, which is really neat to see. Like I, she doesn't, um, she's not very judgy and not very exclusive with one person. So I mm-hmm. feel like there's, she's heard what I've said <laughs> over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes she'll limit and be like, oh, I don't have that one close friend. Yeah. I can have everything too. And, um, I said, well, you know, we've got lots of different people in your life and perhaps, you know, like it'll likely be your husband or your partner that yeah. you know, they will be that one person for you. But have, have friendships is kind of the definition or the way friendships are ex- executed changed at all in the social media age, do you think? Because people have now such a, kids have now such a much wider access to a much larger group of people and seem to mm-hmm, be kind of yeah. in constant comment with that as opposed to having your best friend over and then you play together all day or you have a sleepover and you have that one-on-one contact. Everything seems to be so much more group-like. Yeah. Do you guys yeah. find that with your kids? My mm-hmm. kids' uh, friendship was always kind of a fraught thing, so I don't quite feel like I've had a typical experience. I think Kristen, yeah, she has her moments and 
But I think for the most part, social media has helped her maintain her friendships because she can be very lazy too and not <laughs> just kind yeah. of curl up in a ball and <laughs> <laughs> and shut the world out. So social media encourages her to maintain her friendships yeah. and has given her wider exposure to different people. So if one person is doing, you know, not being um, there for her or what she's wanting at that time, then she'll turn to another person. But and thankfully, knock on wood, we really haven't been on the bullying side of things with these mm -hmm. friendships. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's forced her to be more sociable. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know, Catherine, what about with your daughter? Yeah, I mean, I think she she has a pretty wide group too. Um, and it's interesting how, you know, she has, she calls it the friend group, you know, and there's a, there is a a delineated like, <laughs> group and a number of people that are considered uh, that consider each other their friend group. Then she also has other friends outside of that for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, it's interesting to me that they like spell it out and say <laughs> it and you know, like it's at, but I think it's fracturing a little bit because I, I notice it's not as prominent in her social life as it, as it once was like yeah. this specific group of people and, and, you know, pieces and parts of it are mm -hmm. still, still there, but there's other people kind of coming in and out too. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And I think like with Kristen, it's funny because they, they just call themselves squads, right? Yeah. And, so they, yeah. and they identify themselves um, through the social media, uh, through their texting chat group. So she mm -hmm. has her, lunch group of friends and they're the ones that sit together at lunch and they sit on the big open field at lunch so they call themselves field girls <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> so they have a group chat for field girls yeah and then she's got another group of friends that um are in her uh ap u.s history class so they call themselves you know the a push group or whatever it's uh -huh, called right. and then, so she has these different Chunks yeah. of <laughs> these squads. My, my daughter's the friend group is their their group text is called the Graveyard of Plants <laughs> <laughs> because they they talk about making plans and then they don't actually don't do it. Do it. <laughs> but do yeah. you think that social media has kind of made people have a thicker skin about always being included? You know because. It, like you always see, or maybe kids are better about this than adults, but you, you know, you'll see that people have gotten together and you weren't there. Mm -hmm, and yeah. do you think kids just don't care about it as much or do they notice and feel bad about it, but stay quiet or, you know what I mean? I just, yeah. I wonder if it's, if, because it's so common, you know, to see, Right. Other people making plans that maybe you're not in, that they kind of just have developed a better attitude about it than hmm. yeah, that's, maybe I would have had. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. That's funny because I feel like with Kristen, if she sees, there's a few people that she's, I, I guess she would have her inner circle. I mean, I you know, mm -hmm. she has her her group that she does most of her activities with. Mm -hmm. um, if she sees them making plans without her, I think she probably feels a little bit of a, you know, tinge, you know, like yeah. right. twinge in terms of um, feeling left out. But it doesn't, you know, she doesn't, maybe that's happened once or twice. And she sees people who are part of her squads, but not she's not necessarily tight with, and she's not, it's not that big Right, then she's not going to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. But it certainly has changed the landscape. That's, I mean. Yeah. Because they are in constant contact. Right. Yeah. So. I would love I that when I was Because we, we had a thing um, with a girl that, how am I going to put this? Somebody was involved in an activity and some of the kids would get together outside of that activity mm -hmm. and you know it wouldn't always be all 10 of them at once or whatever mm -hmm. sometimes it would be two or three yeah and it seemed like the mom was more upset about 
times when the group didn't happen to include her child than uh, the child. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, that like the kid me. was like, whatever, I understand that, you know, it's not going to be a party of 12 at all times. <laughs> right. But the mom was like, how dare they leave my kid out, you know? I would have yeah. been the mom thinking that, but I wouldn't have been saying it. I would have been laying down in a dark room thinking, why aren't they in my <laughs> right. kid? Right. Yeah. But we had one occasion like that where she, uh, she was expecting to be invited to a birthday party and she wasn't. Mm -hmm. Her and her friend weren't. And then um, this is the other thing about social media, too. It's actually given, you know how some people are better at, they're not so great on the spot things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have like this, you know, the opportunity, obviously, to bully and use your words hurtfully. But then I Mm -hmm. also think that the girls are learning to be more direct as well. And yeah express their feelings because sometimes you just can't feel like you can say that in person right Mm -hmm. so it's it's certainly given them a voice that they may not have had Uh in terms of being a little bit more direct and saying you know that hurt my feelings yes um yeah so that's what happened so Kristen and her friend sent these other girls a message saying you know that hurt my feelings to see that (laughs) yeah but you know um and so they had a conversation and actually it was like, wow, this is kind of like a really, you know, I don't even think adult women would have this conversation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it worked out. That's cool. So sometimes, you know, it's not the root of all evil. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Do you guys ever find yourself encouraging your kids to include somebody who's, who they've excluded or, um, you know, thinking in terms of, of this, you know, trying to ward off clicks and, and excluding kids. Is there ever a time when you say, oh, you know, why don't you ask so-and-so to go? Yeah. Or do you let yeah. them I've done do that. their own thing? Yeah, I've done, I've done it, especially if it's part of a team. You know, you're inviting 80% of the hockey team, like, yeah. you gotta just invite everybody. You can't, <laughs> yeah. you can't just do everybody except one or two. Right. Like, no, right. that's not, good. that's not okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Or I've talked to my kid, you know, before, maybe before a friend comes over. Um, if it's going to be two friends or if it's going to be, or it, like my son had a birthday party this year and it, he invited a diverse (laughs) you know he invited friends from from his elementary school and friends from his hockey team and friends that he's made since middle school and you know so it was they didn't all even know each other yeah so I was beforehand I'm like you know you need to be you need to be paying attention and making sure that nobody's left out yeah you know like and in informing the invitation list I did also say like well if you're going to invite this one make sure you invite somebody else that they know oh, right well, you know that's right. a good point so that they have somebody to hang out with because you know obviously you know my my son the birthday child can't be mm-hmm. everywhere um, right and at you, once so you can't just go yeah. hang out with your favorite friends and leave these other people you have invited exactly. just kind of hang in there yeah right well, I mean I don't I mean I know that Kristen has her moments but I also feel like she has more inclusive moments than not. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, she she was telling me the other day that um, a boy in her class who is very, you know, very attentive to his studies and is very, um, you know, he just is very concerned and conscientious about his grades. And so he, I guess he, he created this great big review package for their um, AP U.S. history exam. Mm-hmm. And somebody asked him if he would start selling it. So he did. So he went to um, Staples or Office Depot and, yeah. you know, printed off like 30 of these packages and then started selling them. It was a great gig. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure the kid made a fortune. And um, so Kristen had asked him late in the game if she could buy one off of him and um just to backtrack too, I mean, he, he was just, and he's, he was the kind of kid. And she told me later on that, he, you know, people really give him a hard time and are sometimes yeah. not so nice to him because he's, you know, he's obviously 
uh, more in tune with school than a lot of his peers are. Yeah. And they see that. And uh, so anyways, they treat him a little differently Uh and not so nice sometimes. So fast forward, Kristen's asking him for a package and he says, well, you know, I've only got one left and people are asking me for it. And Kristen says, well, okay, I can pay you more for it. (laughs) He's just trying to strike a deal, right? And he goes, you know what? No, he goes, I'll just give it to you because, you know, you've always been nice to me and I remember that. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so you he, know, someday he, that kid is going to own a, you know, trillion dollar corporation and uh, I know. Tell her to keep yeah. in touch with him. I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he remembers. So, he said it. That's right. That's right. So I feel like, you know, she's obviously doing a good job. Yeah. You know, that's at certain cool. Times, so that's very yeah. nice. Makes yeah. you feel good to hear it. Yeah, it does. It's weird. Yeah. So, on that note, <laughs> I don't know. Terry, do you, do you have anything to add to? Like, <sighs> Not too your... much on this topic, Yeah, unfortunately. What about I, your son? Does I, he text? I, does he? My kids are on the excluded end. Of the... <laughs> They're the ones who are not the best friends. But, uh... but your son had quite a few friends in high well, school. This is a phenomenon of self-contained classes. Yeah. Is that everybody goes, you go through school pretty much with exactly the same kids year after year after year. And so, you know, and you invite the entire, it's a small class. So you invite the entire class to your birthday party. So basically you kind of have this built-in set of friends and there's not a lot of going outside the the box, you know? So in that way, he does have, you know, a, a, a friends he's known for, you know, most of his schooling every now and then somebody drops in or drops out, but, but it's sort of, it's sort of artificial. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not really Mm -hmm. self-selected. It's, you've been with these kids for 10 years. All the mothers know each other. So we plan things together for them to go and do. Um, so there's not, it's not like the kids are making up the list particularly. I'm sure there are hurt feelings and exclusions, but although he does have friends, I feel like, um, it's not necessarily a natural sort of process. Uh, whereas with my daughter, she, you know, I always sometimes feel like she had trouble with friends, but there, she had like, for a certain amount of time, she would be very close friends with somebody. And then it just ended, boom, done, no contact. <laughs> and we mm. never saw her again. <sighs> uh, really? And then something else would come most of the time. And that would be really intense for a while, and then it would end. So right now we're kind of between that, and so it's really, really hard. There's not a mm-hmm. lot of there's not a lot of second and third tier people just kind of yeah. hanging out, getting together, doing stuff. It's it's hundred percent, and then zero. Right. So, and I feel there were there were certainly situations while she was growing up where I felt like calling people up and saying, how dare you not invite her? What's the matter with you? <laughs> I yeah. didn't. I didn't, but I wanted to. I said it. I yelled at those girls in the shower. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, so I have, you know, I, I don't think that just saying don't say best friend solves that problem. Right. I think no. it's, I think it's a human problem. I don't think it's even a contemporary problem. I think it's just, you know, you identify the kids who you feel, people who you feel are your uh, tribe, and the ones who aren't, you have no use for. Right. You know, it's hard to just say, you know what, some kids are better than others at, at reprogramming with that. But even then, God, I remember this one time, very, I was talking to this very, very nice mom of this very, very nice young woman in high school. And this was after my daughter had been out of high school. It was a band. We were in community band. So these are all band people. And and this mother was saying that she felt so bad for her daughter because there was this kid who wasn't very popular and he kind of latched on to her. And she was nice to him because she's a nice girl. But really, this kid was pushing it too much. And I was thinking to myself, dang, that was my kid. And I know who the nice girl who was nice to her was. And I bet her mother was saying the same thing. It's Mm. like, you know... (laughs) It's, yeah. it's real. I didn't say it, but it was just on the tip of my tongue that, you know, eh, anyway, so it's yeah. fraught. It's yeah, very yeah. hard and it doesn't get easier when they're adults either. So, well, the social circle kind of tightens up, right? Like it kind of, 
get yeah, food well, left it's, from this. Yeah, I mean, it depends. You, it, it's, you no longer have school providing a constant access yeah. to people. So mm-hmm. then unless you're working someplace where you get along with the people and, and get a, a click there, there's not so much, or, or you're a real outgoing person joining clubs and organizations and book club and this and that. It's really hard. There's not an automatic yeah. uh, social group once you get to be a young adult. So, and it's Isn't easy like to get a Tinder for friends or something. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing right. out another business idea, folks. I think no. there actually is though. There might I be. There... I think Amazon prime needs to get on it. That's I, I continue yeah. to say <laughs> you go on Amazon, you say need a friend. And then like, you know, two days yeah. free shipping. Somebody <laughs> yeah. knocks on your door. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And I mean, the hard thing is I know there's like, a ton of other kids who feel exactly the same way and are sitting in their house, playing with their computers all day, watching TV, mm-hmm. not getting out, not meeting people. How do we get those kids to meet each other? Yeah. Moms, if you got one of those in the northern New Jersey area, right. Call hit me. me up on Twitter. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll contrive some way for our kids to meet. <laughs> right? I might, my friend and I talk about that with... Um, Boyfriends for our yeah. daughters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need to be like matchmaking or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Helping them. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs>